We're going to be going in depth on Cyberlander next with the CEO, Lance King. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring today's show. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. I'm living proof of this, guys. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have your hair left. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Then your treatment is shipped right to your door every three months. Keeps offers generic versions of the FDA-approved medications for hair loss, which makes it more affordable. So find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash now you know, or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Don't put it off. Go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash now you know. But you know what? There might be some hair that you do want to get rid of. And for all of those needs, I would recommend Henson Shaving. <laughs> That's a good point. And if you head on over to HensonShaving.com right now, you can get 100 free blades by using our code down below in the checkout. So we're about to speak to the CEO and founder of Cyberlander, Lance King. He's been working on this pretty amazing cyber camper that has just about everything in it. Uh, we're going to find out how they've been doing, because the last time we talked to them was the spring of 21. Uh, it's now almost a year later, mm -hmm. and uh, Cybertruck's been pushed off. So let's see what's going on with Cyberlander. Well, great, Lance. Thank you so much for being with us today. For those viewers who are watching who may not remember what Cyberlander is, could you give us just a quick recap? Yeah, first of all, thanks, Zach and Jesse, for having me back on. Uh, Cyberlander is the disappearing camper for the Tesla Cybertruck. It's really obvious the Cybertruck is not a traditional pickup truck, and so a traditional pickup camper won't fit in it. So we thought it would be a great idea to create uh, a camper with no aerodynamic drag because aerodynamic drag really reduces your range in an electric pickup truck. And so you've caught a lot of people's imaginations because a lot of people seem to have put in their orders. Uh, what are your order numbers up to? What we've shared officially is I think uh, we're over 2,000, but in truth, we're well over 2,200 now, and the orders are climbing quickly. In fact, uh, I can give you a little bit of an update uh, later when we, we talk about our last press release and the Start Engine campaign. Okay, that's exciting. So we talked to you last year. Uh, you were just kind of just had announced this. What has changed since last year? You've had more time. And so, yeah, tell us what you've been up to. So we have been working around the clock. I have a very tired team, but we're super excited because we've made so much progress in such a short period of time. So we have built multiple prototypes and we just had our latest prototype up to Monroe and Associates in Michigan. Uh, that was part of our first 3000 mile field trip. And we put it on our traditional pickup because we don't have a Cybertruck to work with yet. So we purchased a, a flatbed pickup since Cyberlander won't fit in a traditional pickup since they have fender wells and the Cybertruck doesn't. And we hauled it up to, to Michigan and back and let the team up at Monroe look at our progress and they were very complimentary. They said, uh, we've made more progress in four months than most large companies can make in a year, which oh. we felt really good about. That's really exciting. I mean, a lot of times you bring in Sandy Monroe's company when you're ready for production. It sounds like you brought them in even earlier than that, kind of to show them off the prototype. Now, last time we talked, you had a prototype like in your garage. Is this the same prototype or is this steps beyond that? New prototypes. Uh, we've got a new R&D center here in Austin, and it took us a while to find the right space and to get moved in and to get the equipment and tools we needed in, but they're in now, and it's allowing us to really accelerate our prototype development. So this is uh, yet another new prototype, and we'll have another one that we've already started that uh, we're kind of working on in parallel. Uh, one of the things we found with the supply chain challenges and lo the logistics challenges today is things aren't coming in quite as fast as we'd like. And so the way we're making up for that so it doesn't delay us is we're doing multiple uh, prototypes in parallel. And so we can make progress, you know, even if there are delays. Now, I want to get back to Sandy Monroe in a second, but um, again, for our viewers who don't know exactly what's in this camper, can you walk us through some of the features? You bet. Uh, we like to say that it lets you take your kitchen, living room, bedroom, bathroom, and office with you anywhere and everywhere you go. And really, that's a complete paradigm shift. Uh, over the last 25 years, you've probably noticed the trend of people moving from sedans to SUVs. Uh, and the reason for that is because SUVs can go more places and do more things. And for those exact same reasons, we think 
people will want to move into things like Cyberland or a lifestyle vehicle. Uh, you know, in 20 years ago, a telephone made a phone call. Now you wouldn't even consider a telephone that only made a phone call. And we think 10 years from now, you wouldn't consider a car that only went from point A to point B. You will expect much more of it. And uh, so by being able to bring, in essence, a tiny home with you everywhere you go, it really does change your lifestyle and it changes how you use it. Uh, our customers tell us that camping is actually one of the less frequent uses they're going to have for it. Uh, in fact, some don't plan to ever camp at all with it, but they want to have uh, the capability when they take the kids to uh, a sports event or, or match where there's some downtime in between, a place to get out of the sun, take a break, have a snack. Uh, other people say, hey, I want to take it to the lake or the beach and be able to shower and get cleaned up after so I can go right into town and have dinner with someone without having to drive back home and clean up. And other people are saying, you know, it's great after the uh, bike ride up the canyon uh, to get a shower and, and step, stop by and get some takeout and eat it while it's still hot uh, inside the Cyberlander before completing the drive home. Or just pulling off the traffic. We've had a lot of people in, in places with lots of traffic say, hey, you know, when there's uh, a big traffic problem, I can just pull off the road and get some work done with the satellite internet and the computer sitting in the back. And, and so we're seeing lots of new uses for it. In fact, our customers have identified dozens of, of uses we hadn't even thought of. I think what astounded me was that in addition to beds, uh, it has a shower, it has a sink, uh, it has a toilet, like it has, like like you said, like everything you would need. It doesn't look like it could possibly fit in there. I mean, how did you figure out how to fit all this stuff in there? Because not only that, it then, as you pointed out, goes down. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, actually. You know, I had this outlandish idea uh, that we really needed uh, pickup campers that were much more aerodynamic. In fact, RVs in general that were more aerodynamic as we transition to sustainable transportation. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be awesome if you could actually fit a camper within the Cybertruck's vault? And since I had already reserved a Cybertruck for myself, it was kind of a, a needful thing for me. And so as I thought about it, I thought, I wonder if you could make that work. And so I started doing some sketches, taking some measurements, putting some tape out on the floor. And I thought, this might just actually work. Mm -hmm. So the next step uh, was to make a, a mock-up of it out of just uh, foam board and see if you could really occupy that space and if it would work. And I was surprised and uh, how well it really worked. And it's been really gratifying so far. Everybody that's gotten into it has said the exact same thing. Wow, it's bigger than I imagined. <laughs> and uh, that's just fascinating to me because it's a small space, but we've used it very well. Uh, in traditional campers, uh, you have the challenge of the, the sink and kitchen is right in the middle of the hallway. So you can't get to the dinette set or the bed or to the bathroom without bumping into the person that's sitting there trying to cook dinner or wash dishes or something. And uh, with our layout, uh, the the sink is off in the corner out of the way so people can come in, they can get to the refrigerator, they can sit in the seats, uh, they can move around, get into the bathroom and never run into each other. And then instead of having cupboards right in your face because uh, we're telescopic and it has to go up and down, there are no cupboards there. And so you've got uh, windows uh, on two levels. So uh, whether you're seated or standing, you've got great visibility. And because the ceiling is angled, uh, there's a lot of headroom. So, I mean, this is kind of like the Swiss army knife of campers. So you have all these features, including the kitchen sink, and we haven't seen the final design of the Cybertruck. And we don't know if it's going to have, you know, that sub trunk that they talked about in the initial presentation. Um, we've seen some, uh, you know, some shots here and there of this newer prototype, you know, the one with the, the windshield wiper that that obviously doesn't affect your design. But I haven't seen the sub trunk. Is that going to be a problem if, you know, how, how are you going to be able to do water if they, you know, the dimensions aren't going to work out for you? Uh, so we have a plan for that. <laughs> uh, you, you always want to have contingency plans. And so we have contingency plans uh, based on if the width changes, if the length changes, if the sub trunk isn't there. Uh, we've gone through just about every imaginable scenario and uh, planned for it. And that prompted uh, some 
design changes that we think have made Cyberlander even better than what we showed before. So let's talk about, you brought it up to Sandy Monroe. Is there anything you can share with us? Uh, you said he was excited. Um, did he give you any I new ideas that you hadn't thought of or any suggestions that would make it better? You know, uh, Monroe and team are always great about that. And, uh, you know, you mentioned that a lot of people go there once they've produced a product and want to do better. And it's kind of interesting. We actually talked with with Mark Ellis and the Monroe team uh, even before we launched on April 6th of last year because we wanted to benefit uh, from their knowledge and get it right the first time rather than having to go back and fix it later. And they told us how remarkable that was that most people waited until they'd been in production for a while and couldn't figure out how to make it profitably before they talked to them. Uh, but the very reason Monroe and Associates exist is because they realized early on that only 5% of the money for a product is spent in the design phase that has a 70% influence on the cost and the quality down the road. Uh, so really it's always best if you start with them early on. And they've been very complimentary. Uh, they pulled me aside this time and said, you've got some fantastic engineers. And we really do. We have some amazing engineers that are working around the clock. And one of the things that makes them so amazing is that they're open to new ideas and they don't get ego invested. And so uh, they're able to, to take feedback and, and work with it. And so is the Monroe team. So it's, it's really been a, a fantastic collaboration with them. We really enjoy that relationship. Now, Jesse kind of mentioned, I think, the elephant in the room, which is you can't really nail down the final design until you've got I think your hands on a cyber truck or at least the really good dimensions. And then Elon just, you know, pushed it back a little bit. Um, right. So we think, you know, we hope early 2023, maybe, maybe sandbagging, maybe later this year. Um, first of all, when do you think you can get your hands on a cyber truck? Uh, great question. Uh, we don't know in our discussions with Monroe, uh, we've talked about a couple of scenarios, uh, the scenario where we get specifications up front and have plenty of lead time for tooling and that, and that drives some decisions on materials and manufacturing techniques. And then we've also looked at if we don't get specifications until it ships, you know, uh, let's say uh, we have to wait until they produce one uh, to get measurements. We have uh, a plan for dealing with that uh, that uses different materials and different manufacturing techniques that allow us to adapt very, very quickly within a couple of weeks to build to those new dimensions. You know, those dimensions uh, can change, but they're not going to change dramatically. We're not going to get a four foot bed instead of a six or six and a half foot bed. Right. So there's a relevant range, both for width and length. And so we've designed to work within that. So in terms of features, when you announced the Cyberlander, it had a lot of features. It, it had uh, I'm just going to try and go through as many as I can here. Solar panels. It had a full water system complete with shower. You could you could dump in just kind of questionable water and it would filter it for you. Dimming windows. You're dimming windows, uh, air conditioning. Stairs in the back. Little fold out stairs, a security system. The bed. Voice that... activated systems. It seemed like a heck of a lot. Have you rolled back on any of these features or are you plowing ahead with new features or is it a, a balance of both? We think people are gonna be really pleased uh, that what makes it to production is surprisingly close to what we originally announced. We've not wanted to compromise on that as we've done our customer focus groups and gotten feedback from our, our many customers. They've been adamant that they really like it the way it is, that it inspires them and they like the approach. Uh, they like being able to control it with an app instead of having lots of little control panels on the wall. Uh, and they really like some of those tech features. and. So we have wanted to make sure we keep it uh, true to that original vision as possible. And I think you'll find that there have been very few compromises and some areas where there's been some improvement and some synergy. Are there any features you can talk about where as you started to go from just computer generated, you know, sync or something and you start to actually get supplies and parts where you're like, oh, this is harder than we thought or this is easier than we thought or, you know, any stories like that? Quite a few of them, actually. <laughs> Uh, one in particular is the lifting mechanism uh, for Cyberlander. Uh, you know, I, I've read some comments in social media. Oh, that's easy. You can get linear actuators anywhere to do that. Uh, and it's like, wow, if you can find them, let us know. Uh, we've worked with companies all over the world and uh, uh, have done multiple prototypes of different systems and then ended up 
really developing our own is a mix of, of two existing technologies uh, that have not really been paired in the past. And they're both proven technologies. They work well together. And we'll be applying for uh, one or more patents on that as well. So I can't really get into the details. Uh, but we look at those things as an opportunity. You know, those kinds of challenges are what will set us apart from a lot of other companies is we like a good engineering challenge and uh, we find it's a great way to add some value and set ourselves apart. We got a lot of questions after our last video with you about how do you get this in and out of the Cybertruck? Have you worked on a way to do that or will this be like once it's in, it's in? I've been surprised how many people have told us they never intend to pull it out. But we also know there are lots of people who buy a truck because they want to use it as a truck, right? Uh, they want to throw plywood in it on the weekend or a load of manure or whatever. We've been working with focus groups on a number of different ways to do it. Some people had hope they could lift it up in their garage uh, so that it would be up out of the way and they could still pull in and out. And we found that only a small percentage of people have a garage with a high enough ceiling and a strong enough roof that they could actually lift it up. We've looked at some other ones. Uh, I don't think we're ready to announce one yet, but I think we've settled on one uh, that uh, people will like that will be uh, pretty convenient to use. So Lance, another question we got from a lot of our viewers was about your team. They're like, okay, how are like three guys in a garage going to pull this off? Can you tell us about your engineer team? Yeah, well, it's not three guys in a garage anymore. <laughs> the team's grown quite a bit. Uh, we've got a handful of people in software and AI. We've got a handful of engineers on staff more than full time. I, I'm sure they'd love to get down to just full time work. Uh, and then we've got uh, a number of, of contract developers, programmers, engineers, covering everything from electrical engineering to computer design, that kind of thing. Uh, I think people will be pleased. It, it's not a, a backyard effort. It's a, a full-blown uh, custom effort. Uh, it's unlike anything we've really seen in the RV industry before in terms of the engineering that's going into it. Now, uh, one of the things that you had mentioned is that you weren't going to be going to, you know, your typical RV manufacturers. Um, and that kind of uh, reminded me of the very recent announcements from Winnebago and Airstream. Days apart from each other, they both announced uh, different kind of concepts. Totally not, you know, Cyberlander style. But the one thing that really stood out to me was that lack of software. They had screens on there. And of course, one of them looked pretty clunky. One of them looked pretty old fashioned UI kind of yeah. thing. So I do see the the advantage of, of, you know, being able to control stuff with an app or have it be voice enabled. And, you know, the the extent to the tech that they had in there was, you know, colored lights, RGB LEDs, those are very popular. I want to kind of talk about some of the ideas that you were, you're thinking in terms of being able to use an app uh, to control your Cyberlander or voice controls. Like, what are some of the things that I think people might not be uh, considering when, when you're going to be, you know, living in this or camping in this or showering in this? Well, you know, our, our goal was to have it not feel like a, a leap 50 years back in time when you walked from the cab of your cyber truck back to the Cyberlander, which is really the effect you get going from most pickups today to the camper itself. We wanted it to be, you know, a natural experience. Tesla owners are used to an app uh, that controls the functions of the vehicle. And we wanted that to continue. Uh, so we wanted to give them the convenience of being able to deploy and store it uh, with a single tap on uh, the app be able to control the lights, uh, monitor the uh, water level, the power level from that one app, rather than trying to learn a, a different interface for each of those different control panels. And, you know, frankly, we had no place to put those control panels anyway, because it'd shear off as the wall goes up and down. The basic things you can probably guess, uh, you know, we'll uh, continue to add uh, new features through over the air updates over time. Uh, so just like the Teslas, uh, it will, become even better the longer you own it and you'll continue to get nice surprises. Now, if we look long-term for your company, are you envisioning that this product, the Cyberlander product, will be pretty much it? Or do you have visions for other products down the road? We're really focused on Cyberlander today, uh, but we will not be a one product company. Uh, we think there are lots of other great innovations uh, we can bring uh, to this industry over time. I was surprised to see that the Ford F-150, the um, Silverado EV have over 100,000 pre-orders right now. Is there any thought to having a Cyberlander version for those trucks as well? 
we've had lots of requests uh, for Cyberlanders for the various trucks, and uh, we're not saying no, uh, but we're focused fully on the cyber truck for now, uh, and we'll see what the future holds uh, for those other electric trucks. Uh, there are some challenges uh, in that most of them have even shorter beds. One woman had said, uh, hey, could I get a Cyberlander for a Hummer EV? And I said, well, it depends if you're under five feet tall or not, because it has a four and a half foot bed. <laughs> and so there are challenges, right? It would require a significant engineering effort. And if the demand is there, we'll look at it. But with the Cybertruck, since no existing camper will work with it, uh, it really gave us a, a great opportunity. And, you know, with their high tech uh, approach to things and uh, their focus on making things easy for the user. Uh, we thought that was a great way to launch. What are your thoughts on either having a pullable trailer? I mean, I, I definitely can see some of this technology still benefiting electric vehicles if it's a, a pulled trailer that can pop up in the same way with a lot of the same technologies. Is that stuff that you're dreaming about? Not considering right now, obviously you have a lot of uh, on your plate, but uh, you know, when you're, you know, laying in bed at night, are you thinking of of uh, pullable trailers and other uh, RV stuff. Absolutely. Starlink, I want to talk about that. I think that Starlink opens up so many more possibilities for a Cyberlander because normally you'd say, well, where are you going to plug it into, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for the internet? But now that we've got a new, even a new version of, of Starlink coming out or out um, with even more bandwidth, I see in your literature that it says something about Starlink, but like, is that something that I'll be attaching separately or is that something you're going to integrate? We're not ready to disclose that yet. We're still looking at the possibilities that the new smaller antenna is much easier to package than the original one. Uh, but we don't want to commit until we can get our hands on one. And I'm told I'll have one in the next few months. So hopefully that's the case uh, so that we can incorporate that in. But yeah, it really does change things, doesn't it? Now, for people who are watching who are seeing this fully extended behind you, they may not understand, it sounds like with an app or a voice command that it yeah, collapses and that it, it up, goes up and down. Can you kind of uh, walk us through that a little bit? So with the touch of a button in the app, it expands out and then of course can collapse back down in. So. And now the solar panels, that's really cool. So is there going to be a battery in there? Are you going to use the Cybertruck battery? Like how, how does the, this solar panel get integrated into Cyberlander? The details of that we don't know yet because Tesla hasn't disclosed them. What we do know is Tesla has said uh, that they will have bi-directional power on the Cybertruck. So you'll be able to put power in and take power out. Uh, the interface for doing that, we're unsure of at this point. Uh, so that's one of the details we'll have to work out uh, closer to, to shipping time. Uh, but we are not adding our own batteries. It doesn't make any sense at all for us to take up our limited amount of space and add inferior batteries when Tesla's already going to have the world's best batteries in it and lots of them. When you look at the power consumption of something like Cyberlander compared to moving the Cybertruck, down the road at highway speeds, it's pretty minor. So you can go uh, for a long time, especially in, in temperate conditions instead of extreme temperature conditions uh, and not affect the battery that much. But of course we add the solar to minimize uh, how much of the battery we use. And of course, if you're generating more uh, electricity on those solar panels and you're actually using, then we'll pass it on to the, the Cybertruck to, improve its range. One other question would be, could I have the Cyberlander with the solar panel extended, but the whole thing still folded up? So that way, if I'm parked, I'm going for a hike. I don't need this big like, oh, look at me. I'm a house. Come, you know, <laughs> come try and smash the windows. <laughs> and, and it would just be kind of absorbing or charging my truck. Hmm. That's a, a very common request. And we, we plan to support that. But again, that's dependent upon uh, that which interfaces Tesla gives us. If they'll let us go bi-directional through those power ports, the 110 and, and the 220 in the bed, that makes it easy. Uh, if it has to be plugged in uh, to the recharge port, then that's a little different. I promised someone I would ask you this question because uh, when Jesse mentioned the uh, power ports in the bed, the question I got was, well, how are these guys going to deal with the fact that the power ports are probably going to be in the bed, but yet Cyberlander will block them? And I was like, I don't know, maybe they'll have like a door or something, but uh, we've got you here, so maybe you can help <laughs> answer that. Great question. And if you look at the, the bed of the Cybertruck, it does flare out right as it gets to those plugs and it gives you enough room to put to plug something in, even with the Cyberlander in, if 
you know, you're, you're good and uh, you design it properly. So that's what we're, go we're planning to do. We saw in the Rivian and a bunch of the other trucks as well, and Cybertruck is going to have it, uh, the airports, the uh, compressed air. Will you be able to use that to your advantage in any way? Could that be used to like raise the um, Cyberlander up and down? Or have you thought of that at all? We have. We considered making it pneumatic. Pneumatics actually would have been a quick, easy way to do it. Uh, we could have easily ordered pneumatics and tied into that system uh, and, and used it to raise and lower it. Uh, there are some challenges with pneumatics too. Uh, over time, they'll leak and uh, you'd have to make a locking mechanism to hold it up even if it does leak. And we looked at some of those things and we said, you know what, uh, we think electrically operated is the right way to go. And so we put our effort into doing that. And it was not as easy to solve it that way, but we think it was the right way to do it. Would it be possible, and I'm saying probably further down the road, but just possible um, to have the Cyberlander be a standalone little tiny house that you drive out in your Cybertruck and you say, all right, well, I'm going to come back with all my stuff <laughs> that I'm going to have to put in, the, put in the bed. And so you maybe, you know, roll it out and, and set it up as a little uh, off-grid house with a maybe a battery connection or even dependent on the Cybertruck. That's been a common request, either just for at home uh, so that they can have a guest room when somebody comes to visit or as a little trailer so it could be used with other vehicles or so that they could uh, still access the bed of the truck. And so that's something we're working on. Uh, we don't know exactly how large the demand is for that yet, uh, but it, it looks like it might be significant enough uh, to make it worthwhile to do the engineering for something like that. Uh, so stay tuned. Will there be space in the Cyberlander to put some bags or something or, you know, a fishing rod and then lower it and go on your trip? And then when you get there, you raise it up and you walk in and you get those bags out. Like, is there any room left over for storage? Uh, there's very little space left over. Uh, we're, we're trying to use every cubic centimeter of space inside there. There will be some storage. Obviously, you can put stuff in the refrigerator and you've got the front. And uh, we anticipate the front will be very large. And then, of course, the, the cab. Uh, as a crew cab truck has lots of space in it because there's no hump in the floor for drive lines and that. Uh, there's even more space. Uh, I would guess there's probably some underneath the rear seats. And so uh, I think people will find that they're not as challenged for space as they might think. And uh, we may even uh, develop a few products to help maximize uh, their use of that space. And then I think then the question is, well, if there isn't going to be much space when the thing is closed, do I need to worry that I inadvertently left something out that is now going to oh, either get, get smushed, crushed right? or cause the <laughs> cyber lander to blow up? Uh, have you thought of that? Oh, of course. <laughs> that was the first thing we considered. Uh, and that's why we use AI so heavily, right? And we have a very powerful AI processor on board uh, so that we can tell are the windows closed? Uh, is there anything on the countertop that needs to be removed? Have the uh, chairs been stowed properly? Uh, we want to make sure it's safe and that uh, you're not breaking things when you uh, deploy and store your Cyberlander. All right. So you've gone and visited Sandy. Uh, it sounds like he was pretty impressed. There's a picture of you with, with Sandy Monroe. Are you guys going to be going back to Monroe and Associates when it's time to start production for them to give you advice on actual, you know, the production process, which they're kind of experts in? Absolutely. Uh, the, the relationship is very close and getting closer all the time. Uh, we really enjoy working with them and I think they enjoy working with us as well. Uh, it's a great collaboration. And so you know, uh, Sandy said, you know, there's really not much we can help you with on the design phase. Now you guys have nailed this. And so we're pretty well through the design and transitioning to that manufacturing production process. And yes, that's, uh, they'll be able to add tremendous uh, value for us as we go through that process to help uh, get us up to full production more rapidly and to make sure we're getting the quality uh, that we're looking for. So we, we expect to have them very much involved uh, right up through production. And speaking of production, it's not, you said you're going to make it in Texas. To, um, are you going to be looking for factory space to rent? Are you going to be buying some fa factory space? And how big a factory do you think you need? Uh, so what we're really looking for is about 150,000 square feet. Uh, that was the recommendation from Monroe and Associates. Uh, our napkin scratching put us at just over 100,000. And, and they admitted 150,000 is probably a little generous, but they're confident we'll find a way to use the space. And uh, we think that's wise. So 
Uh, we're planning for about 150,000 square feet. Uh, we're looking at existing. Uh, there are a number of, of uh, there's very little space available right now in, in Austin, but there uh, are a number of places that are being constructed uh, that will be ready this year. Uh, we're looking at some of those. Uh, we're also looking at potentially building. A lot of that will depend on uh, how much we get in investment and uh, what they like. You know, venture capitalists typically don't like to see capital investments, uh, but other investors do like to see something. Uh, they like to see assets. And so it, part of that depends on, on the investors and the amount of money uh, that we end up bringing in. You're making kind of the most innovative camper in the world. Uh, when do you think you're going to start to get the calls from Winnebago hmm. and, uh, you know, Thor and maybe even Tesla? And they say, you know, we'd like to acquire you and all of your technology and your team. You and we can't talk about we want that. you to buy. We want to buy your company. I mean, what are you going to what, what would you say to them if you got that call tomorrow? Uh, you know, we're open to all possibilities, uh, but we're not planning or counting on any of those. Uh, we are laser focused on making Cyberlander the best it can be and bring it to market in time for the Cybertruck uh, to come to market. Uh, Lance, if people want to see um, new features or like a, a prototype in action, is there is that coming out anytime soon? You bet. You know, the best way to stay up to date is to actually reserve a Cyberlander because we'll email our uh, reservation holders with information first. And about that same time, we'll usually do a press release. And then in the days after that, uh, you'll usually see it there or through our social media. So, of course, we're on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, so you can follow us any of those different ways as well. Uh, and March will be a fun month. Uh, we're planning to uh, release some video of our uh, latest prototype uh, showing some of the functional things. Uh, for example, uh, one of the things people said was impossible was an invisible induction cooktop that cooked through the porcelain countertop. And so we'll be showing that uh, actually working. And uh, so we're excited to, to start showing some of the hard work uh, that we've been putting in. So thank you so much for being with us today, Lance. Um, I'm looking forward to our call with you and our investor club. If you want to join that, head on over to patreon.com slash now you know. We'll be having Lance there very soon. Um, and I'm looking forward to that because I think we can get into even more nitty gritty. Awesome. Great to see both of you again, Zach and Jesse. Take care and I look forward to seeing you again. So we chopped that down from a longer interview where we talked more about the investment side because you know that you can invest in Cyberlander as a company now. They're doing a crowdfund. Um, we're going to tell you more about that over on disruptive investing so you can click this link right here to head on over to that interview where we talk about the money side of it um, and then very soon uh, you're watching this on Friday right so very soon we're gonna be talking to Lance uh, on our investor club over on patreon so we had this investor club with about 1800 members he said that he would come join us there and answer your questions and we're going to decide whether we're going to invest in the company. So we'll tell you all about that there. Go to patreon.com slash now you know, sign up for Investor Club, and you get to hang out with the CEO of a company. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll be on a Zoom call with Lance, and you can ask him your own questions. Yeah, because you might have some question that you know no one else is asking, and this is a perfect place to do it. And if you want to hear more of our thoughts about Cyberlander, you can head over to the Investor Club as well. Um, we had a bonus story on there where we talked all about Cyberlander after our interview. But Jesse, after we talked to Lance here, I have a question. What's the most exciting feature for you? And then what's the feature you think they're least likely to pull off? Hmm. I think that the thing that I'm most excited about with the Cyberlander is just having a room. <laughs> uh, not even necessarily on the back of the truck. I always want a little tiny house. I know I could build something out of plywood, but having something with all the smarts and heating and cooling and uh, sink and refrigerator, that to me is like the biggest thing. It's not necessarily the sleeping, but it's it's having the spot. The thing that I think they're going to have the most trouble with is the shower. Mm. Um, I've installed a couple showers mm. in my life. It took a lot of work. Um, and I think putting it in such a small space isn't going to make for the most fun experience showering in it. Did you ever build a shower that had to go up and down? <laughs> no, no. I um, the shower to me is the feature I'm most looking forward to. I know that seems kind of mm. weird, but like when you go traveling around, especially like in a tent, washing yourself off is a hard thing to do. So yeah, the shower to me would be like the number one feature, but I agree with you. I think it's the probably the hardest feature to pull off. I just want 
a hose spigot on the outside of the Cyberlander. I don't want to take up all this room with a bathroom in there. You know, I can go out in the woods and I can shower on the side of the Cybertruck with a little, you know, shower curtain. I would rather have more room to lie down or more room to be cooking. You know, a feature that you brought up that I hadn't even thought of, which I think is the most exciting overall feature. What? Uh, you had mentioned whether or not the Cyberlander could come out of the truck. And Lance talked about maybe this idea of taking it so you could just leave it on your property and have it like be an in-law apartment mm -hmm. or something. If they can pull that off, that would be really cool because then not only are you getting something to go camping with, but you're getting something that could add to the value of your property when you're not traveling. So anyway, I know that we can't think of every single question to be asking Lance. If you want to join us over on our Investor Club, we will be having a Zoom call with Lance in the future. Um, so be sure to get over on Patreon as soon as you can so you can hear all the information about that and ask your own questions. But also put your questions down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button as well. We'll see you next time. Now, now you know. know.